I have a hard time on Zoom uh, switching between microphones sometimes. Uh -huh. It just, it doesn't, it's, well, when it launches, sometimes it doesn't give me the option to pick a microphone. I don't know, but. Well, at least you got it working. <laughs> now, you know, it's like everything is Zoom. So I still haven't figured out how to use it, you know, 100% of the time. Yeah, I've had some issues myself. So uh, the last interview I did, it kept uh, closing the app on me while I was talking to someone. So it was very, very weird. And you were the host. You were still- Yeah, I was the host. The app closed yeah. down. I think it was when we had our internet problems back then, but I don't know for sure. Oh yeah, it's a buggy. Well, it's a buggy thing, but it's like, you know, everything. I don't know, it's crazy just how every single thing you do now is like this. It's all virtual, you know? Yeah, for sure. And it, I, I definitely presume, uh, I prefer Zoom over uh, Skype. Cause you can oh, put it like this. Uh, you can see things better. Like you can see myself and I look at you and not see myself in the corner. Yeah. Oh no, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's the same with me. And it's like, I actually, I teach, uh, English online. So my job has always been my my job is like this. It's like, you know, internet setting. So when everything's the over the past year, while everything's been Zoom only, yeah. that's all I was already kind of, you know, used to having to look at people in a box all the time. So yeah, uh, I felt the same way. I, I never had to use Zoom before. So I had virtual doctor's appointments. So it was very weird to use at first. But I definitely oh, yeah. found this method so much better than Skype. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is nicer. It's a lot smoother. But how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm really excited to be talking with you. Oh yeah, cool. I well, yeah, me too. And so I just, I work a graveyard shift, so I just woke up. So I'm a oh. little, but I'm, I'm I'm almost here now. I'm not like a little bit groggy at first when I first wake up, but I'm kind of, I'm, I'm getting to 100 percent right now. So. Uh, what do you uh, what do you do uh, during the graveyard ship? Mm. Teach English for Chinese children. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's it's a, it is yeah, it's a cool job. I never, I never expected to teach. Yeah, yeah, I never planned on being a teacher, and I just kind of fell into it this particular job at one point. <clears throat> but it's a really good job, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I work with Chinese children. They're usually between the age of like. Uh, it's anywhere from, I'd say, four years old to maybe 13. Yeah, about four to 13. How long have you been teaching them? <clears throat> now it's almost been like two years, I think. You're still pretty new at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. Yeah, see, I did not go to school to, for teaching. I went to school for international relations with a focus on China, right? And uh, which, you know, was a, they, they thought that was good enough that, well, if you can you know, get your teaching certification and all that, and you'll be all right. So, but yeah, but it's actually turned out to be a cool job. Not when the thing is too, it, teaching's fine, but also the fact that I'm dealing with uh, the the children and the parents in China, I'm constantly interacting with people in China, which I like, you know, I just like, I like picking up on Chinese culture in the process. That's very but now I'm embarrassed that I can't speak Chinese, you know, because I've all these, I've got all these five-year-old children that speak Chinese and English and then I'll, I'm here like I'm teaching English that's great but like I, I would like to learn Chinese now you know for sure for sure uh -huh. but it's a hard language to learn I'll bet there's, a, there's so many languages that can be a little bit complicated but oh, uh, yeah. you can pick it up pretty pretty nice yeah though the, the younger you start the better you know okay. that's so I say, yeah, if you start learning a language now, yeah, if you want to learn something, I would start now. <laughs> Chinese probably takes like 10 years to learn. That's what I've always been. <laughs> that would take you forever. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad we got this opportunity to set something up. I've been really looking forward to this. I've uh, been a huge fan of yours since I started watching Forrest Gump in junior high. Oh, um, yeah. The movie has been a huge impact on my life, especially not just because of the Tom Hanks movie, but more the um, personal side of it, like how much I can relate to the character in general. Oh, yeah. Yes. I, I yeah, no, I understand. I understand. I, I actually, yeah, I, I, there's certain things about the character that I relate to myself as well. <laughs> well, I, when I see the character of Forrest Gump, I um, kind of see myself in him a little bit, like I was in, in shoes. 
because I, I have some disabilities myself. Um, like I have autism. So seeing Forrest have some, some of his own challenges, but then he uh, grows up and do something with it. Like uh, he's able to do whatever he wants and doesn't let his braces get um, affect him. He, um, if he joins the army, he's a shrimp boat cop captain. So he- Yes, <laughs> that's right. He ends up doing everything that it's, it's like almost, the fact that he doesn't stress out, he doesn't stress out over it. I think like normal people do, and so yeah. it just happens. You know, he he's able to feel a little copy. different. Uh -huh. like, like he doesn't like being called stupid, and um, I take those kind of words very uh, emotionally. Mm -hmm. I don't like being picked on or anything, but I kind of like that he doesn't let it get to him. <laughs> did you ever? Now you said that. You, did you ever have to? <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, my voice is a little raspy right now because I just got up. Uh, did you ever have to use leg braces or a back brace or anything like that? Oh, no, no. I'm not, I've never had that in general. I just have um, autism and hearing impairment right. growing up. Um, so when I look at the character, I see um, part of my personality within Forrest Gump. Um, mm -hmm. Like some of his characteristic traits I can see myself doing too gotcha well and that's what i was about that's on that on that topic the reason i was asking about the leg braces um <laughs> president franklin franklin d roosevelt i don't know if you know this about him you know he was president oh, back yeah, yeah. you know how it famously now everybody knows that he was actually wheelchair bound mm -hmm. during the whole time but back in those days they never let people see that because they were worried what the impression would be, you know, if he looked like he was disabled, right? So whenever they showed him on TV, he was always standing, you know? They always made him look like he could walk and he was fine, but in fact, in real life, obviously, he's in a wheelchair. But the braces that Forrest wears in the movie are the same braces that he had to wear uh, pretty much the whole time he was in the White House. But, you know, yeah, he had polio was his thing. Uh, yeah, I think it was polio. Yeah, yeah. And but he he had to wear those braces. So I've actually seen braces that he had to wear that are identical to what Forrest had to wear. But it always made me think of well, like what you're talking about. The fact that like this guy had this thing that people were even more critical of it back then, but he went on to be like one of the greatest presidents ever. Yeah. You know, just despite it, which is pretty amazing. And then, of course, Forrest does the same thing, you know, kind of just does whatever he does despite whatever. For so sure. It's, it's, all, it's very admirable, you know, when people just don't, just, you don't let things hold you back. For sure. I definitely uh, like that, uh, especially, um, like, some of the, the scenes where Sally feels pretty much tell Forrest that he can do whatever he wants mm -hmm. um, and not let him, anything hold him back. That really touched me because I, um, I felt like I had a lot of things holding me back growing up, mm -hmm. um, but now I, I'm still a little behind today, but I do want to be able to push myself forward, kind of like using that advice and doing what Forrest would do. Yeah. And how, how old are you now? I'm 23. Okay. Okay. So, all I'm right. I tried to go to school last fall, but then COVID happened. So. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I understand that. That's a good age though. Yeah. I got, I got out of the army when I was 23. So. That's How long age. did you serve? Uh, almost four years. Wow. Close that's four amazing. Years. It's that's, and that's the minimal. Well, basically, yeah. When you sign up, you have to do about three and a half years, you know, it's like the shortest little stint. So I just did my one, my one, uh, go at it and then got out and started going to college afterwards same as what you're doing now same as what you're doing i now. hope i get to go do something because i want to really be able to go to school to study films that's been a long passion of mine pretty much my whole life yeah that's something i've always wanted to do and I, um i was kind of behind a little bit in my schooling so i had to go to an after school program after i graduated yeah. to get some more skills and be able to get my diploma that way right so I didn't really graduate with my class in 2016. So I had I had some challenges. So I was delayed a couple of years. And now that I'm in a very good place, that's what I hope 
my next goal would be to go to school. Well, you 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 want to do film school? Yeah, is what you're planning on doing? Okay, yeah, that yeah, I, yeah, I think you'd enjoy it. And congratulations on that uh, too. I actually I didn't even graduate. I was a I was a problem child in high school, so I ended up I, I technically dropped out of high school. I finished college many many years later. So I, I, I try to act like I'm like, ah, who cares? You know, like I got a, I got a college degree, but I kind of wish I had stayed with it, you know, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I didn't. So I yes, congratulations. Like I had the greatest education when I was in high school. I was always put in that special needs group. So I never had any of the regular classes that don't allow yeah. me to graduate. So I felt like I was a little, um, I wasn't, I don't know how to say this right, but I felt like I was uh, being looked past, like uh, like they didn't see me as a really good student to be in English or history. They were overlooking you, you felt like yeah, sometimes. overlooking, yeah. that's the word. <laughs> so I pretty much learned the same thing in high school, pretty much every single year over and over again regarding special needs English and math. Mm -hmm. um, it's just some silly classes that I felt like I didn't need. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was probably more higher functioning than most of the kids in my class, but I felt like I was, a, um, I should have been able to actually graduate and be a part of those classes. Right, right. Yeah, you were, sometimes you were being put through stuff that you'd already learned several times over and it was yeah. like, I yeah. really felt like I did not belong. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, unfortunately, the systems, well, you know, I, I, every, every education system in America needs updating. It has. For sure. Been. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's been that way for a long time. And only, I've only, obviously just my teaching experiences overseas. I haven't had a lot inside the U S but, you know, I've been, I've got, I know a lot of teachers in America that have told me all about just things are not very well tuned. Sometimes. Yeah, I definitely felt like the system failed me, but the only class that really made me happy when I was at school were the art classes. So what were the, which ones? Art classes. Oh, or, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, art that class. That was a dream, so I was able to draw a lot. I was able to paint and do digital work. So that was pretty much the only thing I looked forward to in my day at school. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Yeah, art was always the thing I enjoyed the most too. And where, what, do you know what school you're going to try and do film school at? Or what you really uh, We have a really big school here in Minneapolis called MCAD, which is the Minneapolis College of Art Design. Right. Uh, for right now, we're looking at me going to community college first, just so I can get a couple classes in to mm -hmm. the credit. It's cheaper too. Yeah, it's always a good idea to start with community college. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, hopefully I'll put my way towards MCAD and then uh, who knows, maybe I could work at Disney or something someday because that's been one of my goals for so long. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, you should definitely do that. <laughs> Between Marvel or Disney, I'm there's so many opportunities out there and there I is. know some things are trickier to do, but mm -hmm. I, something I really want to do and I've got so much potential. So. Yes, that's film school, that's what I, I originally started going to film school. That's what my, when I, when I started college, I was like, well, film school, that's what I should be doing, you know, because that seemed like the obvious choice, you know, since I'd already had movie experience and I ended up changing my mind later. But yeah, it's really good. If you, yeah, if you have your mind in that, that medium, then yeah, it's definitely something to pursue. And uh, I think, uh, well, you seem like you're very invested in it. So I think you can Thank you. with it. I, I'm definitely am. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at reaching out to people, uh, especially uh, like other celebrities like you. I reach out through social media. I connect with everyone. I even share my personal story. So that's something I've um, been doing. And I just happen to get a little bit of attention to it now. And I'm not trying to. Right. <laughs> well, no, but this is good though. So yeah, yeah. You know, obviously the film industry, even more than a lot of others, it's, uh, you know, we, your own, your talent will take you a long ways, but just like everything else, it, sometimes it's like a who you know situation, right? 
But doing this, building up a profile like you're doing whenever you go to start working in the film industry, this will yeah. we'll be able to, this will make it a, probably a little bit easier to find jobs, you know, which For is sure. good you want. I, I definitely or you'll, least, you'll meet some people, which is what you want, definitely. Yeah, I share all my artwork online. I especially take the people that I uh, do pictures of. Like uh, I did a picture of Tom Hanks, like Woody from Toy Story. I actually sent it to him. And a couple months ago, he sent me a personalized letter himself. Uh huh. <laughs> like office typewriter, and I did not think I was ever going to hear back from him. <laughs> yeah, he and his typewriters. He's got a bunch of uh, yeah. He collects typewriters. Yeah. So cool. I was over in the moon that day when I got the letter. Um, because I had people tell me in some autograph groups that I follow, because I collect autographs as well. Mm -hmm. I had people tell me that I was never going to hear back from him. And, right. Um, that because he, I guess he just doesn't really respond through mail, and I, I was just one of the lucky ones, I guess. Well, he, yeah. Well, I don't know, I don't know <laughs> uh, personally about it, but I think what, I'm sure. I think in his case, I and mean, he gets so inundated with messages from people that it's you. It's hard to ever. I'm, I'm sure it's hard for people to ever hear back from him because he probably gets a thousand. Things yeah, like that. you know, and I that is actually people telling me to give up on it, and I did yeah. not want that stop me. Well, and that's it's cool that he responded to you because I uh, I didn't talk to him between uh, basically between the time of Forrest Gump and about five years ago for about twenty years or so. I wasn't talking to him for any particular reason. I just didn't have you know I wasn't wasn't in communication with him. And uh, when I was about 30 and it started to kind of go back into acting, I was like, well, you should at least start talking to the guy again. But I had no way of getting in touch with him. You know, I didn't know anybody that knew him or anything like that. So uh, I anyways, just like you, I basically sent a handwritten note uh, down the line and was like, you know, he'll probably never see this, but maybe he will. And then about three days later, he had written me back you know okay. yeah he even he eventually he he emailed me back surprisingly quickly and i've been kind of talking with him ever since but yeah i think uh i don't know there's something about you i'm sure he saw he saw your letter and decided that you know, <laughs> yeah I, I, I just sent him a sketch and a really long letter about how much i love the character forrest gump and how much mm -hmm. disney has had an impact on me as well but, and i just pretty much said a simple fan letter and i didn't I just was not expecting a reply at all. <laughs> have you, uh, you've never had them on here though, right? For your I'm channel. Sorry, what? You've never had them on your channel though, right? No, not, not Tom. Yeah. Well, I'll eventually talk to him again. I, I talk to him just every now and then just for, you know, various reasons. But, it would be uh, so cool. I, I, I can, I can mention it. I, yeah, I can mention it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I got a whole bunch of questions here that I was looking forward to asking you. Oh, and, uh, yeah. You mentioned the braces that you uh, wore in the movie. Uh, what was that like uh, working in the braces? Uh, well, that was kind of, uh, it was, you know, strange because as an eight-year-old, well, I didn't really, you know, I was just, I was eight years old, so I didn't really understand you know what the concept of wearing braces was all about you know uh but yeah it locked my legs straight so i couldn't bend my knees so it was a strange situation but i get you know i think i just had fun with it because i was eight years old you know it was just kind of a you just had to walk with your legs straight so i just kind of just probably goofed off a lot when i was that age uh but it was an interesting thing it also did make me think about wow if you actually had to wear these all the time this is a this is definitely an adjust an uncomfortable yeah they are uncomfortable and i you know they do have stuff like that now but obviously those were vintage those are like 1950s era mm -hmm. leg braces I, there's probably different methods now for that kind of thing sure. but but i would say too that the excuse me the knees unlocked the the knee joints they could unlock so when i wasn't filming i could walk bending my legs you know <laughs> yeah so they could unlock them and lock them back up with joints and so between, I between a very strange question but uh when you were doing that scene where you were being chased by the bullies um mm -hmm. down that driveway 
Yeah. How did the braces break? Like, were they ah. set up to make go like that, or? Well, okay. So the same, the joints, the same joints that you could bend in your knees, right? So they took a pair of those braces and they they implanted cap bombs into the joints instead of screws. And then they had those wired so that they could remotely detonate them. So when I was running, some guy pushed a trigger and it blew them up, you know. Oh my God. They, they literally exploded. Uh, and they actually showed me how this would work before it happened. And it scared me because I was eight years old. They showed me the braces blowing up and I was like, no, no, I don't want to wear anything that's going to explode, <laughs> you know? So it took them a lot of time to convince me to put those on, you know, after that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were wired to, to blow up, you know? But you don't, of course, when you see it filming, they don't look like they're exploding. They just look like they're falling off. But yeah, it's oh, a good effect. Magic is really incredible. And I had oh, yeah. no idea about that fact regarding the braces. Mm. No, and you know, of course, the thing is with Forrest Gump is that that was, because it was in 1993, it was, that was the era of practical effects. They were still, it was, nothing was CGI back then. They actually had to like create everything, you know, physically. Right. Which was really cool. I always liked physical effects in movies. CGI. I just definitely loved uh physical effects from the old uh the older days like from older yeah movies. like the old star wars looks better than the new star wars you know <laughs> i love them all no matter why but it uh, always fascinating to fascinated me to see how things were made back then from like the 20s or um oh, yeah. 50s. Uh, yeah it makes me wonder how much uh was done back then without the use of all these other effects that they use today yeah, they had to be very, very creative about it. I love watching the behind the scenes features. Mm -hmm. um, so I caught a couple of things on the Forrest Gump DVD yeah. uh, regarding like um, the feather in the beginning of the movie and at the end, and uh, like how they used, what was it, the handshake with JFK, was it maybe? Um, yeah, blue screen stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did all I that on the screen. How the heck did they do that? Yeah blue screen yeah and that's the other thing Forrest Gump was also one of the it was a movie that kind of pioneered blue screen technology where they sure. where they yeah they were doing the whole blue screen handshake like you're talking about with the presidents and everything mm -hmm. it was really cool especially with the Nixon one it feels like they were really talking to each other mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like wait how did that happen I know uh, yeah I always I didn't know until recently honestly I so those scenes with the presidents, I assumed that those were, okay, so obviously Tom Hanks wasn't there with JFK and he wasn't there with Nixon, but I thought that like when JFK says, I guess he's got to pee, right? Yeah. I thought that was something that JFK actually said to somebody, but that was, you know, they, uh, they dubbed over what he was saying, you know, they, uh, they, they created it. So, but I was just like, wow, I was like, was somebody really in this situation where they like told JFK they had to pee or something like that? <laughs> you know? I actually thought it was just an actor in makeup that looked like JFK or Nixon this whole time until right. a couple of years ago uh -huh. when they were really archived footage, just digitally altered. No, and that's right. That's right. And the guy, you know, Robert Zemeckis, the director of Forrest Gump, that was his thing. He was always, they, I think one reason they, selected him to make that movie is because he was known for special effects that was his thing he had done back to the future right and back to the yes. future, yeah that had really good effects for the 80s you know so he was uh he was a uh screen wizard kind of guy you know amazing to be able to watch that mm -hmm. like um like how he did uh lieutenant dan without his legs after the war uh, I always wondered how they did that too, because I never, I was so young at the time when I started watching the movie. So that I just, and now I know they just pretty much blue screen or green screen the legs and then make it look like it's cut off. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And that, I guess that's what they did with that. That's one thing I see. I was never, I never got to be present for the filming of his scenes. So I never really saw firsthand how they were doing that. But yeah, I, you know, I always, that's right. They they green screened it or blue screened it for his legs. I always thought that maybe his legs were tucked under him in the wheelchair, 
Like, you know, like he was sitting on his knee. If I had the chance to ask Gary Sinise back um, when I met him a couple years ago, I would have definitely asked him. <laughs> you talking about Gary Sinise? Yeah, it was at one of his yeah. kind of Dambian concerts. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah you can go ahead. Um, it was 2013, I remember this very vividly. Yeah. Um, I was in the front row. I actually had a painting that I did of him. Mm -hmm. And he recognized me from social media and pulled me right up on stage. <laughs> oh, cool. And this was a Lieutenant Dan band. Yeah, the Lieutenant yeah. Dan band. <laughs> That's really cool. They travel around the world doing charity uh, for the military. Yeah. It was really incredible. Um, yeah. That's mind blowing. That was, that was like one of the best experiences I ever had. Um, yeah. I would think that it'd be the same for me because I, I never only. I saw him once filming. I, as in, like, I saw him at a distance. I saw Gary Sinise walking by and was like, hey, it's Gary Sinise, right? But I never got to meet him, right, when I was doing the movie. Never met him, never talked to him or anything. And the thing with him is that, you know, like you just said, he does all these military charities. He's the one guy that I should have probably been talking to all this time because I was in the Army, right? So I'm like, but somehow, somehow he and I have never – had contact you know but I imagine that at some point in the future I'll eventually meet him and you know I, I don't know like just seems like we were like a natural match you know a natural match you know to like be working together on charity stuff and all that you know but we'll see really people have tried to set me up with them before and I just have never really followed through with it or anything but, <laughs> yeah. But yeah yeah that's very cool. honor to be able to meet him um just the year before I started watching CSI New York and mm -hmm. uh led me to discover what the other actors were in. And that's kind of how I discovered Forrest Gump because it was not only recommended to me, but mm -hmm. I watched it mostly because Gary Sinise was in it, not just because it was a Tom Hanks movie. And the more I watched the movie, the more I realized I had a personal effect on it. Yeah. Like, uh, the movie had a personal impact on me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I see an actor in something and I'm always curious about what other things they did. So that's Kind of how I got into Forrest Gump there. Right. Definitely really cool to do that. And then I saw him in concert. I met him. And I'm still blown away by him after all these years. Yeah. He is one of the coolest people out there. I mean, he will, you know, obviously he's a great actor and everything. But it's like the, what he does in his personal time is amazing, you know. For sure. Yeah. I, I haven't seen him much in anything now since New York ended. Since I New York. Uh, but I love that he takes his time to do all this uh, for the military. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I can, I admire what he does. Well, I mean, yeah, if I were him, I'd be the same way. Like, he's probably got enough money coming in from his residuals now that he's just like, I'm just going to go do what I want to do all the time, which is <laughs> what I'll be doing too, you know. At some point, you retire from acting, you know, just because it's great and all, but like, you get to a certain, I'm sure in his case, he got super famous and was like, all right, I've had a, had my fill of this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> now, I've seen pretty much now he's helping other people. Everything. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I just, I just been a fan for a long time. And uh, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I lost what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, just, it started with CSI New York and then it just went, out, went from there. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. He is awesome. He is very, very cool. Um, so when you auditioned uh, for Young Fours, what was your take on the, the character that made the producers like you so much? Um, well, uh, well, OK, so uh, obviously, again, everything everything I did back then has the caveat that I was eight years old. You know, I was just a child. Right. So I only uh, only ever understood so much. Um, but they uh, my parents just said hey there's a movie do you want to try out for it for fun and that's what it was it was just about doing it for fun because i told them at some point before eight that i wanted to make movies right and they're like, okay right and then when there was a movie audition in memphis where we lived they're like you want to try out and i was like of course so i went in and the thing is the first time i went into audition all they did was ask us questions about ourselves. We didn't read the script or anything. They just sat all these kids down, including me, and they're like, what's your name? Where do you go to school? What's your hobbies? What do you like to do? Just, just kind of scanned us, right? 
And then about a week later, they were like, okay, you can come back in. And it was narrowed down to fewer kids. And then it was, we would start reading from the script. So the first time I actually read lines from the movie, I just remember thinking like, I don't know what this is about, you know, because I was just so young. I didn't really understand it. The thing is, I didn't understand the story of Forrest until I had seen the movie like a year later. I, they, they gave me a script when I was eight years old, but I didn't read it, of course. You know, I just read my lines and then I just kind of ignored the rest of it. And, uh, and then while the movie was filming, I would watch them shoot other scenes and I never really understood how it all fit together. And then when I actually saw the film a year later in, in theaters, I was like, oh, I get it now, you know, like I get what the story is. And, you know, and I was like, wow, this is really tragic, you know, because <laughs> it is kind of a tragic story, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like he has a tragic story. Uh, both what happens to the people he knows and obviously, you know, there's Jenny and all that. And then she's, she doesn't survive by the end of the movie, you know, after all that stuff. So it is, a, it's a tragic film, you know, but I remember even when I was eight years old, the one thing that really struck me about the character, uh, and this is due to Tom's acting talent, you know, but uh, two things that really hit me in that film are and I uh, when he, he finds out he has a son uh right he finds out he has a son and she she says it's your son and then he says and then you know he starts getting like emotional and the first thing he asks her is she says is he smart or is he like me right yeah which the fact that you realize that he is cognizant of himself the entire time like like they portray him as like this not smart guy the entire movie, but he actually understands the entire time what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, he's aware of it. And then at the very end, when uh, when he again he's he's at her grave and he's uh, talking to her grave and tells her that how 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 intelligent he is in school, you know, and it makes him start to like crack up. It's just it I it, I almost felt to me like a reveal for the character, you know. Like they just, they set him up this certain way throughout the entire movie. And then all of a sudden there's this, all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow. He's like a thousand times more intelligent than they portrayed him as. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, he may look a certain way, but um, he's intelligent in his own special way. He is exactly, exactly. He has like, what do you call it? He has a certain form of empathy and emotional, I don't know, he's got, he has his own versions, you know, of understanding people better than they understand themselves. For sure. So, yeah, that's something that when I was eight years old, I still got that. So that's just how well they did the character, for real. I cry every time I watch the movie, no matter what the end it is. The cracked up, yeah. <laughs> I definitely cr uh, crack up. Whether it's laughter or crying, I lose it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Completely lose it. Um, I read somewhere that when you and Tom met, he, um, how do I say this? Um, he went based off of uh, the way you were talking or something and kind of built that into his character as an adult. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> he, uh, okay, so they hired me, they, they cast me when I was a kid, uh, I guess just because they were casting, you know, like I said, they went through the list of kids and were like, we like this one, this one, this one. They eventually, they settled on me and was like, okay, he can do it. So they cast me, got me in there and weeks or months into filming, uh, Bob Zemeckis, the director, had he basically was like, okay, this kid does not sound anything like Tom. Like, you know, like there's a problem here. Because I had a really, really profoundly deep Southern accent. And, uh, they were like, apparently Bob Zemeckis went to Tom. It was like, hey, we have to figure out how to get this kid to talk like you because this isn't working, you know. And then Tom was like, well, I'll just talk like him. You know, obviously that'd be the easier thing to do, you know. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it started with him trying to learn to sound like me. And then it turned into him not just trying to sound like me, but like he like adopted like mannerisms and everything, you know, because I was this really quirky kid. And I think what they figured out was like, they were like, okay, Forrest, if you were to transplant a child's personality into an adult, that is a good Forrest character, you know? 
that, yeah. that, that worked for the character. So I think, yeah, I think he just kind of used me as a template and was like, hey, we're going to make this eight-year-old kid into a 30-something-year-old man, right? <laughs> and that'll be the Forrest Gump character. And it works for the character, right? So yeah, it's a, weird, it's a weird thing that now I can look back on and I'm like, I can literally see that he's like being me, you know, like when I was a kid. And I'm like, wow, that's just, it's just a bizarre, surreal thing to watch, you know, for me It was now. incredible. Yeah, it worked. It worked very well. Well, and that's just, you know, good actors do that. I mean, like, you know, I, I've only learned this recently, but yeah, when you're, if you want to be good at acting, you have to find, you have to find real life examples of things to work mm -hmm. off of, you know, so, but yeah, if you go back and watch his earlier auditions or not auditions if you watch the earlier screen test with tom he doesn't talk like if you watch the earlier yeah, that is true <laughs> yeah he has a normal he accent him. he's not doing the forest character you know and then i think after he ran into me he was like all right perfect you know perfect template so so he took your boys and pretty much put it for the character yeah and it works it works plus he obviously forced us from alabama i was from mississippi it all works out you know like it, it was a good setup and I've met the man that wrote all this stuff, the Winston Groom, who wrote the novel. Yeah, yeah. And he explained to me where this character came from, you know, how he came up with it and everything. And yeah, yeah, it all it all flows together very well. That's amazing. I, I read the book and the sequel. Uh, I was um I didn't start reading them until like a couple of years ago, like long after I've seen the movie, because I had no yeah. idea it was the book. Um, it was definitely a lot different than the movie. Yes, it is. It's very different. So, which you saw, I'm sure you saw this, <clears throat> excuse me, the book, the movie basically uses the book's story, but the character is a much, the movie version of Forrest is much more family friendly. For sure. The right. They did that on purpose. You know, uh, Eric Roth is the screenwriter. He's the guy that actually took the, he adapted it into a screenplay mm -hmm. and that's what he did yeah he decided he was like this story is perfect but Forrest needs to be kind of toned down a little bit you know yeah for sure when I was but it works book, I was like this is nothing like what I've seen in the movie no no it's a very good book but but the 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 movie version of Forrest is definitely a better version than the one of the for book. sure <laughs> but, no, but you see where but Winston who wrote the book his whole idea was simply like somebody who just kind of accidentally stumbles on a history, you know, yeah. which is what he does. It's really cool the way he set it up. And, and Winston has been now, the artist of the world and everything. So. And now the movie is such a major hit with this, with, despite the changes from the book to the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you also, that's also why they never made a sequel. It's like, there's the sequel book, but you know, it just, I don't think I they should really try get the sequel. I, I didn't really get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That people ask me that they're like they're like you heard rumors of a sequel yeah. happening. I read about it online, but then 9-11 yeah. happened. I heard they just stopped that. So they will they did it. Well, you know, anytime a movie is successful, they automatically somebody in the studio goes, let's make part two, right? But they had enough sense with Forrest Gump to be like, okay, we're not making them part two this is forrest gump's not a a two-part thing it's like i don't think so they, they wouldn't work no, no. They, they would just really mess it up if they tried to do another one i think just the one film is perfect i literally got the tape right here uh-huh uh-huh that's I cool yeah, yeah yeah i like having the vhs version so. <laughs> there it goes. and just watching it i and i'm thinking about what a sequel would be like I don't think it needs a sequel. No, it doesn't. So a lot of movies, yeah, there's a lot of movies that, that a lot of movies that they turn into sequels. They should just not have done so. Yeah, no, some sequels are just terrible. Mm -hmm. There's some sequels are better than the original. Some are. That's right. There are some and, movies. Uh, aliens compared to the first Alien, one. Terminator, Terminator Two is better than Terminator One. Well, my favorite too. Alien is better than Alien. Yeah, you're, you're exactly <laughs> right about that. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back. What's that? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that one definitely. That's definitely the best of them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got my own personal ranking of the Star Wars movies just by each trilogy. So I just go by the originals, the prequels, and then the sequels yeah. in the ranking. Empire is definitely num the number one in that ranking. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, that one is like, I, yeah, they're all really good, but that one's just. Yeah, there's just so many like moments. It explains some things in the yeah. middle of it all. 
Mm -hmm. That's true. And then uh, Revenge of the Sith is the best prequel. Yep, I agree. And I know a lot of people did not like the other two very much, but I actually really love the first one, The Phantom Menace. I do too, just because it really, uh, well, I mean, it's, it, well, that's the, the beginning of the story. For sure. I mean, it, like, it's the beginning of the entire story. So it's like, it sets stuff up. Actually, I, I really like that one. I think people just didn't like it because they spent a lot of time trying to explain and not a whole lot of time trying to do action, you know? Like 20 years after the original trilogy and then they just changed everything based on the computer graphics and that classic. That's stuff. right. But the fight in that one at the end, the Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, Darth Maul fight, that's one of the best fights oh, in all So cool. Uh-huh, yeah. I, um, I never really experienced Star Wars in the movie theaters, although I did see Revenge of the Sith up when I was too young to remember it. Yeah. Um, the real experience I had was when the sequels came out a couple mm-hmm. years ago. And I've never experienced a Star Wars movie like that in the theater before. They're good. Yeah, they're definitely movies that, yeah, they're, I guess they are best seen in, you know, a theater setting. Last Just because so it was when for the Rise of Skywalker came out. I was working in a movie theater and then I went uh-huh. to the Thursday night showing. It was jam packed and it had cosplayers everywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't think I was going to be able to sit through an entire theater with 100 people at once. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Get myself a seat. <laughs> I have been in a movie theater before where I had to sit. This was and this couldn't have been legal, but like I went to a movie on Christmas Eve, right? And it was like, surely nobody goes to movies on Christmas. Right. Everybody went to that movie, right? And I was sitting on the stair, like the staircase, right? You know, like trying to watch the movie. It was just crazy. That but, happened to me once when I was trying to go see Star Trek into darkness. The theater was Mm -hmm. jam packed and there was people sitting on the floor. And I'm like, well, that's not right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That's like that's that's like the fire hazard. You can't have people in the aisles, but you know, I guess they're just like I don't love to go see a different movie, (laughs) but I specifically remembering that being for Star Trek. I am looking forward to it, and then that kind of got ruined. What's that Star Trek you mean? It was Star Trek into Darkness, where I that was trying to go see. Then the theater was just packed and people on the floor. Yeah. It just made no sense to be there. That was uh that's the one that has Benedict Cumberbatch in it. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, he's one of my favorite actors. I like him a lot. I'm sure, I'm I go sure. pretty much watch the reason he's in. Um and then there was the, the superhero movies like Marvel and DC. They're always packed. They oh god, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they are. Yeah, any of that stuff. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all the comic book stuff now, yeah. Of course, I don't know. I, I, it's like, I want to see where they're going to go with it now, you know? They've had a break because, well, 2020, and like after after Avengers finished off, we're kind of entering the new era of whatever we're doing. Yeah, we're going to be, we're going to go with Black know? Widow, and then we got some movies that were supposed to come out last year, but then that didn't happen. Yeah, I want to see Doom. That's what I'm waiting for. Which one? Like the Dune. Oh, Dune. Dune. Yes. That's that's the only movie that I'm really waiting to see that got put off is Dune. Like, I really, really I, want to see I tried to sit through the original, but it was really slow for me to watch. No, the, well, the, uh, the original, the, the one that they made in the 80s, it's just, it was a, a very badly done it, it was. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I like Kyle McLaughlin, but the movie, I yeah. think I'm bored by it. It has good actors in it. It's got Patrick Stewart in it from Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. It's got, it has very good actors, uh, but just the, they just, they were not prepared to try and turn that into a movie. You know. Now the new one has twice as many major motion picture stars in it. It does. And also the new one, uh, the new one cuts off it ends halfway through the story. So it's set up to automatically be a sequel. It, it's just the, you know, it's such a, it, you need at least two movies to tell one book. Yeah, I mean, the whole movie, so, when I did this, get through it, most of it did not even make sense to me. Because I felt like no, it was it, adding it, things. And I'm like, wait, where did this character come from? What happens here? Yeah, that's right. That's right. They have to explain everything. 
Dune, and that's the thing too. Dune, you're best off reading the book before you try watching the movie because it's very. Uh, I haven't even read the books yet. <laughs> oh yeah, they're my sister's been reading them right now, and it's it's a, ooh, they're they're crazy. They are. Crazy. <laughs> Oh, there were so many movies coming out last year that I was just looking forward to seeing. Yeah. Um, the, between other than the Wonder Woman, which I was happy to see on HBO. That that went, yeah, that's right. They took that out of the theaters and put it on. Yeah, it's one they put on demand, but I do not want to spend, keep spending 20 bucks a month just to rent for two days and then have it disappear again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have much in the way of streaming services. I... I end up, I eventually see stuff, you know, at some point, but Apple now, but Apple TV, that's something I've been thinking about getting because they've got a lot of really, really good. Yeah, are- for sure. I, um, I, I got, I got that and they, uh, have really great shows like the morning show. Um, there was something else I can't think of it right now. Uh, Servant, mm-hmm. another good one. I pretty much have so many streaming services and yet I still can't find anything else to watch. I know that's what that's whenever I like like I don't have cable and when I go to my parents' house they have cable and I'm like all right I just want to watch TV I can't <laughs> find anything to watch like I'm, I'll go through every single channel I'm like there's nothing on that's any good you know all my TV shows they're really not um, on at this point they keep going into breaks every other week mm-hmm. how slowly they're filming everything now yeah. Um, Grey's Anatomy is actually back tonight, and that's been off for six months. So. And now, are, is that still, are they still making new episodes? Oh, uh, yeah. It's just been off since November. Oh, wow. I didn't know they, I thought they, see, I was actually literally just thought about that show the other day, and I was thinking they, they were done. I thought it had actually ended. Now, some shows, they just kind of need to be done with, like uh, NCIS, that show really kind of needs yeah, to be done. Yeah, they do drag certain stuff on for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, Whenever you, uh, have, did you ever watch Charm? I mean, no, 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 sorry, not Charmed. Uh, Supernatural. I did watch Supernatural. Oh yeah, I haven't watched it in a long time. But aren't they on like season seventeen now or something like that? Uh, they, they, the final season uh, was on a couple months ago. Oh, they ended it. They yeah. did end it. Oh God. Oh wow. I can't believe that. Oh, that that went exactly. forever. You know, like. I, I, I watched that show. I watched it nonstop between like season one and twelve, and then uh, I was like, "Okay, I just can't." This yeah, just I mean, kind of got old. Uh, kind of got old after a while, but they did not do a good finale. <laughs> That's good. Good. I'm glad they did. Yeah, yeah. Well, those guys, those guys, I'm sure are set for life. You know, uh, what's his name? Paladecki and uh, the other one. Can't think of his name. That's right. That's right. Yeah, they're. I'm sure they're set forever, so they don't have to, you know, do any more work after yeah. that. <laughs> so, uh, when you were um, working with Forrest Gump, what did you love most about playing the character? Uh, really, uh, when I was doing that as a kid, it was. Uh, well, I think I was just fascinated with how they made movies. You know, like watching the production aspects of it uh watching just how they set shots up and how they did the special effects and everything yeah in particular uh i was always into the military when i was a kid well i mean but i was just into like airplanes and stuff right i just liked airplanes like most eight-year-old kids do yeah so while i was doing the movie they would occasionally set up meetings uh between me and like marine corps people and stuff so uh, we got to go i got to go play on like fighter jets and helicopters and all that when i was eight years old and when they were shooting the vietnam scenes and blowing stuff up i was like pushing the buttons that blew stuff up you know so (laughs) i really enjoyed that as an eight-year-old kid it was just a big giant spectacle for me you know when i was that age yeah so cool yeah it was that was cool and then uh yeah yeah just what this the production part of it all was very very neat because i really never like I said, I never really understood what I was doing as far as the character went while I was doing it, you know. And now I'll look back and I'm like, you know what, maybe that's good for acting. I'm like, I did this thing not really knowing what the character was and I didn't care. I was just like, all right, just do what I tell you to do, right? I'm like, well, that might be good advice, right? If you're going to like act nowadays, you should just don't get stressed out. Just do what they tell you to do, you know. For sure. 
if uh, <clears throat> <laughs> um, it was really, really great to be talking with you today, uh, Michael. It was really such an honor to be able oh, to yeah, talk absolutely. and uh, talk about Forrest Gump and so many other things. And I'm glad we got to connect on social media. Oh, yeah, today. yeah, me too, for sure. <laughs> Um, well, I, I um, really thank you for your time to talk with me, and I am, I'll see you on social media then. <laughs> yeah, 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 me too. Yeah, I'm sure I will talk to you here soon. <laughs> I will send you a link to the chat soon, and um, well, uh, I, I look forward to hearing from you again soon. Okay, yeah, me too. I appreciate it. Okay. Have a good day. Good luck with school when you start school here soon, hopefully. Hopefully soon, maybe in the fall, yeah. and who knows? Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. And, and you uh, I guess you could say say hi to Tom Hanks for me. <laughs> yeah, like I said, eventually, I, I hopefully I'll eventually chat with him in the near future. So yeah, definitely I will. All right. Well, have a good night. Yeah, you too. See ya. Bye.